Hey there, welcome to the Morning Man and Podcast, and we are uh, working our way through the Psalms. I'm Pastor Greg uh, from Lighthouse Church in Twin Falls, and uh, the Psalms are intimate expressions of God's people, and primarily David, and they are so useful for devotion, and by that I mean... Uh, nurturing our relationship and our intimacy with God. And there's nothing more important in life, nothing. Relationship with the Lord, spending time with him, hearing from him, talking to him, sorting things out in light of his word and so on. And so it's life's great endeavor. and, uh, And for those who embark on such an endeavor, when we breathe our last here on earth. Our next breath will be in the very presence of Jesus, the one whom we have lived for. And so Psalm 15 is uh, again a Psalm of David and written upon the occasion of uh, the, the bringing of the ark to Jerusalem. The ark, of course, was the, the box with the golden lid that uh, contained the commandments, the stone tablets, and the uh, rod of Aaron that budded, and so on. And it would be in the holy place of the tent, the tabernacle. And so this is before there was a temple, and uh, Solomon, David's son, would come along and, and build a temple, a more permanent structure as a center of worship. But it was there that God told Moses back in Exodus, that's where I'll meet you. I'll meet you there where the ark is. My presence, my Shekinah, my glory will be there. And so David felt that, man, I, I, I want to I make the centerpiece of worship, the center of our life worship in Jerusalem. And, and so finally... Uh, he was able to transport the ark. It had been sitting in a little border town called Kirjath Jerim, and uh, the Philistines kind of dumped it. They had it for a little while, and uh, and but now it's in Jerusalem. And now David is pondering, who who is able to like be with you in the tent? Like who's worthy of that? What is that person like? So this is a very interesting psalm. And, um, you know, the rabbis taught that there were 613 commandments that must be kept. And this psalm, Psalm 15, delineates about 11 commandments that we need to strive to keep. Micah 6, 8 reduced it to three. What does the Lord require of you to do justly and love mercy and Walk humbly with your God. Well, Jesus reduced it all to two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so as we go through this psalm, we shouldn't um, think of these exhortations and commandments as something that we do to attain favor with God, but rather these are what the life of someone who loves God should look like, if that makes sense. All right. Psalm 15, a Psalm of David. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? I mean, what, what kind of person is it that, that can live so near to you and walk so closely with you? It's a great question. So David begins to answer. He says, he who walks blamelessly. So the person who's going to dwell on the holy hill and be in the tent with God needs to walk blamelessly. The, the Hebrew word underneath blamelessly, uh, it, it, it means complete or whole. So this person isn't divided. They aren't, we might say, two-faced or, um, you know, uh, harboring deceit and guile in their heart, but they're complete in their whole. Well, secondly, 
David says, this person does what is right. Does what is right. Literally, justice is the word, ethical. So the, the person who's going to be in the tent on the holy hill, they're, they're going to be an ethical person. Well, thirdly, he says they will speak truth in their own heart. So, so this is a person that faces reality squarely, doesn't try and justify their sin, um, doesn't play games in their heart trying to make themselves out to be more than what they are or any of that. But they speak truth. They're tethered to the truth. They press into reality. I mean, you think about it, reality is, it just is. <laughs> and we have a relationship to it. And either we can look at it with open eyes in light of the word of God, or we can deceive ourselves and have a tenuous relationship with reality. So God's people are to be in living in full light of the truth of who God is, of who we are, of what, you know, this life is and so on. Well, next he says, this person does not slander with his tongue. So, so the person who's going to dwell on the holy hill in the tent with God is someone who doesn't slander. He doesn't try and make people look bad and say bad things about people. He refrains from that. He goes on, he says, and he does no evil to his neighbor. That word is evil. It means cause pain and misery. Um, this, this person is wanting blessing for people. It's wanting, wanting good. Malice is another, another word there for evil, um, where your, your intent is to cause a person pain. So you'll say something or do something that will cause them emotional pain, physical pain even. So the person who dwells on the holy hill in the tent with God wants good for people. Well, next he says, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. I love that. So, so there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a loyalty there. And, and so when, when somebody comes along and starts, you know, talking about their friend and saying, well, they did this, they, nope, not gonna, not gonna hear it. You're not going to talk to me about my friend without my friend present. I refuse to hear it. And so that's the kind of loyalty that God, God's people ought to have and display. Next, verse 4, he says, In whose eyes a vile person is despised. Now, you know, we wrestle, we, you know, living in New Testament times, we wrestle with despising someone. So, because God so loved the world, he loves all people and so on. But God despises the things that are despisable. God despises sin. And so we live in a culture now where sin is exalted. I mean, people are you know, putting up memorials and murals for people who have done despicable things. And they get honored. And that's sad. It ought not to be so with the person who loves the Lord. Second part of verse 4, he says, But whose honors, or but who honors those who fear the Lord. So, so those who this person who can dwell on the holy hill in the tent with God, they despise the, th the people that, you know, are, are terrible humans. It doesn't mean they don't love them in the grander sense of wanting them to, you know, be saved and know God, that kind of thing. But they look to those who set great examples and honor them and aspire to them. Who do you look up to? Who do you aspire to follow in their example. Well, 
that will say a lot about you. So verse 5, or I'm sorry, there's one more phrase here, one more command. This person also swears to his own hurt and does not change. So, so if this person makes an oath, they will keep the oath even if that oath costs them. So Jesus in New Testament terms said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't let there be a discrepancy. If you say yes, it's not a maybe, it's not a, oh, I changed my mind kind of a thing. So your word is, is actually the measurement of your character. If you say, I'm going to do this and you don't do it, then, then your word is not very valuable. And so the, the value of your word is fully dependent upon you keeping it, doing what you say. And there's nothing that a human being has that's more valuable than our word. So he goes on, verse 5, who does not put out his money at interest. So, so this person who dwells on God's holy hill is not um, trying to make a buck off of people's tough situation. And, and so they're not looking to, to benefit off of people's misery. Next, he says he does not take a bribe against the innocent. Nope, not going to do it. I don't care how much money. Um, but my, my vote, my uh, decision, my whatever, it's not, it's not for sale. No amount of money will make me change my mind. And then lastly, David sums it up by saying, he who does these things shall never be moved. <laughs> the, the person who lives out these 11 commands, that is a solid human, <laughs> a rock of a human being. And so, listen, if you're a follower of Jesus, these are the things we ought to aspire to. And... Listen, the Holy Spirit is at work in you and encouraging you towards these very things. We don't, we don't try and uh, keep these things in order to gain God's favor, but we want to live things, these, these things out because we have God's favor. Hey, God bless you.